Good morning. My name is Chrissy Sonic, and I am the Director of Youth Ministry here at St. Joan of Arc, 6th through 12th grade, and I welcome you wherever you are on your journey. Today, we are talking about preventing gun violence. Last summer, while I was gathering ideas for service groups for our youth, I couldn't stop thinking about our kids going to school every day with the thought that today could be the day that a shooter comes to our school. My search for help in this area led me to Maggie Emery, a longtime SJA person and an expert in this arena. When I asked her if she would help me educate our youth about gun violence over a cup of coffee, she immediately said yes, and we formed a MICA service group to teach our youth about this issue. So today, please welcome Maggie Emery, Luca Lajos Calasara, a member of our youth group, and Fred Beyer, an SJAer who has been personally touched by gun violence. Good morning. My name is Maggie, and I'm the Executive Director of Protect Minnesota, which is the only state-based, statewide gun violence prevention organization in our state. I've been a parishioner at St. Joan of Arc since I was four years old, and I've been involved in everything. <laughs> this year, I was the leader of the MICA Youth Service Group that met to learn about gun violence. Like it is for so many in our country, gun violence has been personal to me for most of my life. Members of my family and friends have been lost to this epidemic, and I grew up in the era of mass violence. I can pin each era of my life from kindergarten to my current career as it corresponds to a mass shooting. However, it's important for me to acknowledge just how lucky I am in the midst of this epidemic. In Minnesota, our black neighbors are 10 times more likely than white people to die by gun violence. Those who live in impoverished neighborhoods are six times more likely to experience gun violence, to experience gun violence than folks who live mere blocks away. And firearm suicide is far and away the most common type of gun violence in our state, accounting for 71% of the 570 deaths in Minnesota in 2022. Hello, good morning. My name is Luca Laos Calasara. I am a senior at Anoka High School and I have been a parishioner at SGA since I was two years old. I have participated in this community by reading, singing, and speaking in the gym and at family mass. And I have been a peer minister at St. Joan of Arc. I have also been involved with others here at St. Joan of Arc who have met all year in our MICA Youth Service Group to learn how we can end gun violence. I have been personally impacted by gun violence in several ways. Since the year 2000, there have been 1,375 school shooting incidents and 1,676 casualties. It has become a fear shared by my entire school community. And it has become common to talk about escape plans or places to meet if one ever occurred. It was especially terrifying when my brother was at school with me. I would be terrified if a school shooting ever happened because I wouldn't be able to know if he got out okay. Good morning. My name is still Fred Beyer, and my wife and I have been members of St. Joan of Arc since June of 1967, so you can do the math. <laughs> um, in that time, I've been uh, chair of the first parish council, been a longtime member of a small Christian community, and currently serve as chair of the Parish Finance Committee. On December 14th, 2012, a young man with mental challenges took up his assault rifle and after murdering his mother, proceeded to Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut, where he killed 21st graders and six adults in four and a half minutes. Our granddaughter was in the fourth grade at Sandy Hook. We learned of the shooting from CNN while we were at the Y, and after an hour, confirmed the shooting with our son. 
Upon a subsequent visit to Sandy Hook, we viewed the leveled school and learned the shooter lived on the same street as our son's family. We presume our granddaughter heard the shots and the screams before being spirited away to a safety at a nearby fire station. I say presume because she's never talked about it, even when someone has brought up the subject. The Sandy Hook school shooting has scarred every member of our family. We try not to cry when we see a group of first graders. We'll try not to think of the lockdowns our great-grandchildren will have to endure just in case. It's affected every day of our lives. In my role at Protect Minnesota, I'm often asked what we can do to help our country break and heal from our addiction to guns. I think it's deeply important that we stop making this an us versus them issue. I've talked with people all over the state. For the most part, gun owners want anyone who decides to own a gun to do so responsibly. And even those who are on the extreme end of this issue usually feel the way they do because they fear for the safety of those that they love and want to protect them. When we're willing to meet others where they are on this issue without judgment, we will get so much further, even when it feels like they're just so wrong. Trust me, I get it. The other major piece is to recognize that gun violence is born from the same societal injustices that create so many of the other issues in our community. Racism, poverty, sexism, lack of opportunities in housing, education, and employment. It's all a big connected tapestry. When you work on any one social justice issue, you are working on preventing gun violence. As a result of the direct impact on my family from the Sandy Hook shooting, we became active in lobbying for effective gun laws. I wrote letters to my congressional delegation. I even have a response from President Obama urging us to keep up the fight. I donated to advocacy groups such as Protect Minnesota. I wrote letters to the editors of local papers, and I gave talks to groups who would listen. So where am I now? I believe we as a society have become accustomed to gun violence rather than offended and outraged by it. I encourage you to become educated about gun violence, about ghost guns, straw purchases, bump stocks, and 3D printed guns. Support organizations like Protect Minnesota. Talk to your neighbors and friends. Nag the hell out of your representatives and get mad. In my lifetime, I've seen a number of incredible culture changes around things that we thought were intractable, such as smoking or wearing seat belts. It's time for another. Get to the point where you can say, we're mad as hell and we're not gonna take it anymore. I believe that to end gun violence, we cannot shove statistics and books at people. We have to understand others to grow. We can teach everyone about the consequences of not having regulations on firearms in the country. The way out of the situation and others like it is the destruction of ignorance. And I challenge you to examine your own biases. I am a Latino male, and I am often perceived as a threat as someone who might be carrying a gun or might be violent because of my skin color or the way I dress. When I walk into a gas station, the guard keeps an eye on me so I don't steal or hurt anyone. I get wary looks if I have my hands in my pockets or if I reach in my jacket to grab something. And that is the sad reality. When we do what Jesus in our Catholic social teaching asks of us, to love our neighbors as ourselves, even our neighbors who own guns and value those rights seemingly above all others, to take action and care for the vulnerable and right what is wrong, we are doing the work of gun violence prevention. Our gospel today asks us, who is my family? My family is all of the people who have waited for word when they know that a loved one is huddled in fear from an active shooter. 
My family is all of you who refuse to be quiet and refuse to be complicit, all of you who channel anger and outrage into working for the common good. Our gospel today asks us, who is my family? My family is all of us who are threatened by gun violence, either in community or from a domestic partner. My family is all of you who have been afraid that a loved one in suicidal crisis might get access to a gun. My family is all of you who want to protect those who you love. My family is all of you who act on your faith to make a difference. Our gospel today asks us, who is my family? My family is all of the young people who live in fear in their schools. My family is all of the young men of color who fear for their own lives. And my family is all of you who will continue to speak up and stand up for an end to gun violence. St. Joan of Arc, you are our family, and the world is our family. And to that we will say, Amen. Amen.